What is up, everybody? Steeler Nation, Steeler Country, Steeler Crazy. We are back with another episode of the Sick Podcast with a very, very special guest and some breaking Steeler news. So you're not going to want to miss this. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. Steelers Crazy. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. Yes, yo, yo. There he is, Mike. Get some sleep. Man, I, I tell you what, not really. <laughs> I'm on West Coast time right now, man. But oh, man. like you said before, Steelers never sleep. Neither do we. I'm cool with it, man. This this isn't even a job. You know, we're working. We get to talk yeah. football. We talk Steelers. Come on now. We got an all That's six great. show coming up. Yeah. So uh, before we jump into our special guest, uh, just kind of some, I guess it's not really breaking Steeler news, but it's, you know, important Steeler news. Terrell Edmonds kind of bid in a tweet his farewell. I think he's, what, five seasons now. Um I'll just kind of give my take on it. Um, he was a good first round pick, um, played it about a third round pick. Uh, mm -hmm. he, everyone knew he wasn't going to be Troy Polamalu. Um, I definitely think that he's replaceable. So I do wish him the best because, you know, he did. He was a serviceable when he was here. But at the same time, I don't think this is a big of a loss. It's like I'm not really mad about it like I was about the Cam Sutton. You know who else thought he was replaceable? Omar Khan, because yeah. we haven't seen the numbers yet. We haven't seen the team yet. If it's been revealed, we're filming this on Thursday afternoon. So uh, apologize if we're not touching on that subject. Uh, however, I'm sure it's not going to be this exorbitant amount of money. Uh, I want to say we've had a few safeties. CJ Gardner-Johnson signed for like $3 million. So my guess is Edmonds might be in that two-year, $7 million phase or something of that nature. Um, I think Edmonds is replaceable as well. However, they better replace him, <laughs> you know, uh, and I think they will. One thing I tweeted earlier today is that I trust the Steelers, right? Like they're going to have a plan. They had a plan yeah. when they lost Cam Sutton. You see Omar Khan's plan to revamp this offensive line really coming into play. So oh, I trust effort. that they're not going to go into the draft pigeonholing themselves into needing to take a safety or needing to take a hybrid corner who can play in the nickel. I think there's a plan out there. Uh, I actually want to bring up something. I heard this from a few guys who I used to work in sports with. I'm just going to throw this out there. This is a bit crazy, but we're the Steelers crazy podcast. Two names to keep in mind. Antoine Winfield Jr. Wow. Currently plays for the Bucks safety last year of his contract. The team is way over the cap. They're going to look to unload some guys. And the other guy, you ready for this? Jordan. Wow. Whitehead. Oh, hell he's not a free agent. That's my guy. Not a free agent, but I think he's on his last year of his contract as well. Man, if Omar Khan is cooking in the kitchen right now, that he would be is. a filet mignon. That would be, you know, crab legs. That that mm -hmm. would just show everybody that uh, you know, losing Edmonds, I think, is something that ultimately will be okay. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he was. I mean, I do wish him the best. And, you know, we had his uh, brother Trey on the podcast before. And uh, they're, just, they're just a good football family. I mean, imagine being the mom and dad. They have three guys in the in the NFL. I think that that's uh, a pretty good, a big accomplishment. Um, I wonder if he'll join his brother in the Bears. I, I just, I do. Or he, can, or he can go to the Bills and just take his number. Yeah, there you go. You never know. But, yeah, we're going to get to our special guest not other than Lindsey Rhodes, uh, Sirius XM, formerly on NFL Network. Basically, mm -hmm. she is the queen of the NFL, so we're excited to get to talk to her. So let's do it. And now we're going to transition to somebody who is a titan in this industry. We are very excited to bring in the host of the NFL Rhodes show. You can listen to her, of course, on DirecTV and Sirius XM Fantasy. Find her on Twitter at Lindsey underscore Rhodes. For us today, all roads lead. So Lindsay Rose, Lindsay, what is going on? Hey guys, happy to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. We are thrilled to have you. All right, first of all, I was, I got to pick your brain. I, was, okay. I jumped on your Twitter 
okay. the other day. I think this might have been yesterday. All right. All right. And, and you were tweeting about some things that peeve you. And, and oh. I, this is such an interesting topic to me because obviously I, I got to brainstorming after I read this. I think one of your big pet peeves was people who get in their car yes. and turn their lights on in the parking lot while you're potentially waiting to take their spot. And it's they just sit there. Lot. It's a busy parking lot in this scenario. Busy too. parking That's lot. important description. Yes. Yep. Right. Like you're, like you're going to a football game or, or something like that. And they don't wave or anything in the background, right? They just let you sit there, yep. right? That's that's nauseating. Well, there's two. There's two. There's two. One of them inspired uh, my Twitter thread of rants. Um, one was the person who's like at the door and you drive up. You don't know if they just walked to their car or if they're getting out of their car. You don't know because yeah. you just got there. But you see that they're out of their car and you're waiting. And it's a busy parking lot and, you know. And they just do whatever they're doing outside. And then they just lock up the car and walk away. And you're like, I just sat here for like five minutes for you <laughs> to do that. Like you couldn't just go like, I'm not, no, 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 nope, I'm not leaving. Like what, what is wrong with you? And then the other one is when you're in like grocery store parking lot, this is where it happens to me the most. I feel like where it's busy, you're looking for a spot. And then the person walks to their car and you're like, oh, wait, I'm going to wait for that one. And then they get in. They have to observe that you're waiting for them. <laughs> and then they get in their car and proceed to what? Like answer their emails? You know, yeah. and I, like, what are you doing? You didn't bring it's a baby just with you. It's just common courtesy. Yeah. yeah. So then inevitably what happens is you're like, okay, fine. I'm moving on because who knows what you're doing here. And then that's when they pull out because that's Murphy's Law. Anyway. Yeah. I think that grinds my gears too. No pun intended there. Um, that was an yeah. interesting way to start. I thought you were going to throw your microphone into, into the wall. See, well, um, you brought up the things that really like make me go zero to 60 in the anger department. Like that's like, I see there. that. All right. I got to give mine really quickly because okay. you had me brainstorming. This one, okay. I number one on my list. I think about it all the time. And I feel, first of all, I, I it's a tough industry, right? But I really, really do not enjoy when waiters do not write down my order. Oh, because now that, you're that I, I mean, for me, it's kind of like a what are you trying but to do? But what if they get it vibe? right? What if I, they get it I right? I think every time you get that wrong, it just yep. looks so bad and you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes even if you write it down. But every time they don't write it down, I'm just in my head like, come on, please don't make a mistake. Well, and to the point that you made, I um, even if they get it right, then I have spent the 15 minutes that go by from the time Thanks. that you took my order to the time that my order comes stressed yeah. out about whether yeah. or not it's going to be right. Like just if you if you are so adamant that you're like, I got it, then just pretend for me. <laughs> like you don't want to write it down, then don't write it down. But like, just like, give me the peace of mind that my order is going to come out the way that I'd like it to. You're, you're, right, you. you're right. That's annoying too. Thank you for agreeing with me. All right. A natural transition here. We're with Lindsay Rhodes on steel. It was crazy. We're, we're thrilled to be chatting with her. Let's talk about the state of the Steelers after free agency. Lindsay was that a natural obviously. transition? Things that yeah, annoy yeah, us yeah. in the state of the Steelers. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you know, I think, that is, if, if listen, if, if your takes are that you're frustrated with what the Steelers are doing, certainly a natural transition. But if you're somebody <laughs> who uh, really loves what they have been doing, uh, you're kind of on the opposite side of the fence there. So obviously, you know, they signed Isaac Samalo. Uh, they're beefing up the secondary, or potentially Patrick Peterson. Uh, Jordan, I didn't necessarily love that, actually, uh, in terms of losing Camp Sutton. Anyway, you get my point. Talk to me a little bit about what, you've seen in terms of the Steelers and free agency so far? I think the Steelers and free agency have made some like mid-level solid moves, you know, which is pretty consistent with the way that they do business traditionally. The one thing that's inconsistent with the way that they've done business is going out and getting a free agent at cornerback. Like the Patrick Peterson signing is a little bit out of character, right? But I think it, it does make sense to bring in a uh, free agent's, like him who have that veteran presence in a locker room, maybe with the roster that they have now, as opposed to the roster that they had for a number of years where you didn't really need that veteran presence. Cause you had a lot of guys kind of spread around that had been there for a long time. Um, but Patrick Peterson, I mean, you alluded to not necessarily loving the move. He had a lot of success last year in Minnesota where they were playing a lot of zone, you know, uh, 
Pittsburgh plays a lot more man, will he succeed in that? Or are they going to go more in his own direction? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I like it. I don't love it. There are no moves that have been made that dramatically changed my opinion of the team. And I think that the, the main question that I have, the biggest question for the Steelers, and this isn't like breaking news is what will Kenny Pickett look like when he comes back and what will be the jump that he takes from year one to year two. And we're anticipating that there will be a jump. How dramatic will the jump be? What will the areas um, that maybe were slightly slight deficiencies in year one, you know, what will that be in year two? Have they made any moves to really help him progress in those departments? Like Jalen Hurts, the big story last year, right, was um, for the Eagles. Would Jalen Hurts take the steps necessary for them to be competitive? Um, resounding answer, yes, in retrospect. But one of the moves that they made, obviously, was a big splash move to get A.J. Brown. But even if it wasn't a big splash move, one of the things that the A.J. Brown signing did specifically for Jalen Hurts was he would kind of struggled throwing to the middle of the field. Well, A.J. Brown, they went and got not just a good wide receiver, but a good wide receiver who's really good in that area of the field. So you're giving him a guy who can go make plays for him, make him feel a little bit more confident throwing to that area, and then watch those numbers go up, and now you're a more complete quarterback. And so I'm not sure that I have any answers yet from the Steelers, but I just am not sure if they've made moves to help his development, if he will develop on his own the way that like Josh Allen did, you know, there was a year to year, like one year when he came back and he was just a way better quarterback. So what will that look like for Kenny Pickett? That's, I think the biggest question for me. Would you be on team Steelers sign Odo Beckham Jr.? <sighs> what does that look like? You know, like where, where do you, cause, cause I was looking at them today and saying like, let's say like D hop, even like something super big, right? Like mm -hmm. in, let's say that the money's there and whatever, like, how does that work with the pieces that they have right now? Yeah. And Odell, maybe like D hop, you just figure out a way, like you move people. Um, but where the, it feels like they really need an upgrade maybe is like in the slot, but that's not. You know, but I, I like Pickens a lot. I think that's another development opportunity. Like, does he get better at running Chris Brouts? You know, because he's such a big play, like splashes, athleticism is insane. The one thing that wide receiver people told me all year long was that like his route running was a little bit iffy. And there were some plays where they turn on the tape and they go, I don't even know what he's doing here. And so there's room for improvement for him. But I think he has the tools to be incredible big fan of just like the natural physical ability that he has as a wide receiver. And then Deontay Johnson is somebody who's kind of a trustworthy, like security blanket type guy. Um, like where does Odell play? How does that affect the guys that they have? What, how do you see that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't think he's a great fit. Uh, you make a great Especially point. in the locker room. Yeah. I, I agree with that to a degree. I mean, I think Odell has always had that kind of, you know, branded to be a little bit selfish. Maybe that isn't necessarily true. I don't know him personally. Uh, however, this is an offense filled with with youth. Kenny Pickett, Najee Harris, Pickens, you mentioned. I don't know if he's the type of leader, ultimately, that you want to bring in. You know, I, I, I think there are guys that they potentially could have had a chance to sign that bring a little bit more of that leadership. I would have been in favor of them bringing back Juju Smith-Schuster. I know that sounds crazy, but Juju, a tremendous teammate who has familiarity, obviously, with the organization um, and, and, you know, can play the slot, can play the outside and is tough as freaking nails uh, out there, Jordan. Yeah, definitely. So this is a question I wanted to ask and get your thoughts on head coach Mike Tomlin. So we have a lot of local reporters on as well as national. But when we, you know, we know locally here in Pittsburgh that, you know, his playoff success, he won with Cowers team. Like, you know, obviously we just like to ask someone at the national level, what is the perception of Mike Tomlin? Like from someone, you know, that it's not cup, you know what I mean? You're national. So we just kind of wanted to get your perception on, on what that is. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you're going to hear anything different here. Uh, then I, I think at this point we're all kind of on the same page with Mike Tomlin to a degree. Yeah. I, I mean, I would love to hear someone's argument, um, that is different or like, yeah. you know, the counter, the counter argument to why Mike Tomlin isn't rad. Um, Mike it's Tomlin Twitter. Me, yeah. It really? I mean, it's fan? like, I mean, the moment you post something about Mike Tomlin, you'll have 50 people in the comments saying, 
me, if this is what you want, mediocrity, like that, that's all it is. If you're happy with 500 seasons, no losing seasons. And I'm like, imagine being like the Detroit Lions, the Cleveland Browns, like there's franchise, the Buffalo Bills who are relevant, but still have yet to win a Super Bowl. So that's what, to me, it just baffles me because I'm yeah. like, he's a great coach. And you, you just see, like, even Patrick Peterson, I know the Brian McFadden connection, um, a friend of the show. Uh, but what, what's oh, crazy even... is, yeah, is that, you know, everyone wants to play for Mike Tomlin. Like, he takes these kids out to dinner. All the draft people that we had on our show, they're just like, man, he's like, he's talking about eating chicken wings. We're talking about what's your favorite, this and that. He's just a, he's a, he's just a great guy and obviously a great coach. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. But, I, you know, there's I think always. Especially now when it comes to luring talent that that's when I think that becomes the most um, important. Right. Uh, but then also in terms of like building a locker room with chemistry, I think yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I think that that matters. And I know that that's an intangible thing that's kind of hard to track, but it, it's one of the reasons that I think I'm not as high on the Aaron Rodgers to the jets thing as a lot yeah. of people are that I'm hearing, but that's a sidebar. Um, the Mike Tomlin thing that I think the word that I would use to describe him is authentic. And I think mm. everything's going in that direction from a leadership standpoint. That's the word that you keep hearing almost to the point where you're like, oh, my God, stop with authenticity. Yeah. But that's something that's always stood out to me about Mike Tomlin. Like everyone's going to know where they stand with him. Everyone top to bottom media, you know, uh, players, all that stuff. And he has the type of gravitas um, to lead a team in a way that is, has the authority you want your, your coach to have within yes. the locker room. Like they're a little bit scared of him, but they also kind of know that he's their guy too. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's a good mix in a personality and he brings that to the table authentically. Um, that's another thing that you mentioned the lions as a team that's never had that. It's funny you say that because the lions are the team that I've been the most excited about and like an, yeah. an under the radar sort of way for the last couple of years, I've been like banging the table on my podcast, like watch out for the lions. This is coming. Yeah. And I Dan always, Campbell, exactly. That's what I was Yeah, Dan can he's just like a guy, like when I was watching hard, I'm like, dude, I would play for that. I would run through yeah. a wall for this guy. And that's why I feel like these guys do for Mike Tomlin. And sometimes that doesn't work. Like when he did the whole biting kneecaps thing or whatever yeah. it was at his introductory press conference, I was rolling my eyes. I did not. Yeah. Enjoy. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't like, Oh, yeah. he's going to be an awful coach, but I just was like, that wasn't selling me. But then when you see it on hard knocks, you see all of the different layers. You see the mm -hmm. NFL films clips that come out. That's who yeah. he is. He is that yeah. guy. He all doesn't the time. change. Mm. And, and he, he had, a, he has, he had a, an under, um, like a town, a team two years ago that just really wasn't talented had them playing so freaking hard that they were in games that they had no business being in. And then last yeah. year, the combination with Brad Holmes and the GM, and they're just building. They're such a good combo, and they're building to the point where like it's coming, you know. And when yeah. you have the chemistry and you have the culture, and everyone's buying in. Um, I know this is a Steelers podcast, not a Lions podcast, so I'm kind of going off. Yeah, but the, the, it's My alluding to. The standard is the standard. That's it, it's it's up up at the wall at Acroshore Stadium. So it, it all it all yeah. ties in with it. Yeah, um, I mean, then, you do. You, it's a big transition period for the Steelers, though, right? So like all of those things yeah. are not enough. And I get where Steelers fans are coming from. Um, and and you see that with with every type of franchise that is used to having success. I mean, we heard I heard stuff like this about from the Niners out of Niners camp. You yeah. know, after the playoffs, it was like, well. We just get so far in the playoffs and then, but how yeah. are we going to get in? So Kyle, and it's like, I'm like, Kyle Shanahan, you have yeah. questions about Kyle freaking Shanahan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's only one team that wins the Super so Bowl each year. I mean, yeah. like, yeah. Get, oh gosh, how many teams must roll Look, their We're eyes, getting her right? fired That's up and we're not even talking about pet, te pet peeves anymore. So <laughs> um, <laughs> one, so I, had, I just had one more question. You kind of already talked about it. So it's just like a simple question and I'll throw it back to Mike. Um, just, just talk about, do you think that, um, Kenny Pickett can be a successful quarterback in the NFL as far as getting, doing enough for the Steelers to contend for a Super Bowl? Um, I don't want to, I mean, yes, can, um, yes, I, I, I would never want to 
I would never want to say anything authoritatively no at this yeah. stage of someone's career. I mean, we've seen so many. I mean, Josh Allen kind of changed the whole evaluation game forever, right? <laughs> like yeah. there are there are I mean, Justin Fields in Chicago has what look like limitations from a passing game standpoint. And I'm told that there are people around the league who truly just don't think he has it. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, how have you yeah. made that assessment so far? He has no one to throw to like at the very least what he does on the ground is like, let's build around that, you know, like, so, so I would never want to say anything like that about anybody. Um, I yeah. would, I, I think this is going to be a big year for Kenny Pickett, you know, and do we take steps forward? Um, how, how much is, um, off like the, the, the pieces around him. I think he might be one of those quarterbacks who needs everything to be pretty yeah. good in order to have success. You know, does he have a big arm? Can he make those big throws? Is he that guy who's going to like pick up a, a, you know, chunk plays here and there? Cause that was one of the things that the Steelers struggled with. Like they, you know, move the ball methodically down the field, those few times that they did score touchdowns, which weren't enough. Um, and you know, do you, do you have the guys there that can make those big plays? Is he that guy? but I don't have answers to that yet, but I haven't seen any reason to think that he is not that guy and I'm ready to write him off. So no, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in wait and see mode with Kenny. Bates. Yeah. The second half of the season was really telling because obviously like in Pittsburgh, I can speak for, you know, the fans here, not me personally, but it's like, they want instant gratification. Like yeah. if he throws one interception, like, Oh my God, he's terrible. And I'm like, Tom Brady throws interceptions. Like it's, it's, it's football. Um, but yeah, I mean, cut out the turnovers and the two minute, uh, he was the two minute man. I mean, they already put a, a shrine in the hall of fame. I, I seen that uh, the NFL posted for the two, uh, two minute comeback. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited for the future and it's, it's, it's definitely cool to him being from Pitt. It's like, you know, a storybook and I, I do believe that he could lead him to a Super Bowl because Trent Dilford won a Super Bowl. So that. That just says it right there. And that's not well, a knock. And maybe he's maybe like, we don't know what tier of quarterback he is. Exactly. We don't know that yet. There's yeah. no, there's no limits, you know? So at this point when people are so young, I think there's such a big development leap that, and everybody develops at different rates. I mean, Gino is a very extreme example, but yeah. like, look at what happened with Gino. We were done with Gino. And they wrote Gino him came off. in and played, but he didn't write back. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I feel like quarterback play is is just one of those things i just want you know and i understand people not feeling like they want to be patient yeah. and that they've seen enough but i think there are too many examples out there of people who do take that leap and who do progress and so if he comes back this year and he has gotten better in some of the areas that were deficiencies then like okay let's work with that there are some i'm sure that the steelers have laid out and mike tomlin for all the reasons that we just said like he's gonna let you know where you stand i'm sure he said this is not good enough this is not good enough this is not good enough these are also loving you up the things that we do like that you do, but come back yeah. and be better at these things and let's help you get there. And I'm, you know, we'll see if he does. Definitely. You are listening or watching the sick podcast Steelers crazy. Make sure you look below, subscribe to us on YouTube, the sick podcast Steelers crazy joined like by sticker. one of our favorites, Lindsay Rhodes over here. Lindsay, Thank you me. cover the entire NFL. Give us a storyline. You're following right now. Closely non Steelers related darkness retreat. Darkness retreat. No, I mean, but the thing about that, okay. Yeah, now you're going to get me going again. This is another subject matter that I can get going on. Um, is Aaron Rodgers a pet peeve? He he might have become one, yes. And, you know, like, I, I was, for years, somebody that probably would have been like, I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan. Like, this is yeah. from a, just pure athletic ability and quarterbacking skills and stuff. Like, he's the guy, right? Like, he's so freaking good. But then there's something that happened um, to his demeanor in the last few years where like a lot of, a lot of people have this just like vibe, the, an air of confidence about them. And then I think that something happened where it tipped and just went right past the confidence thing to everything feels condescending. And, yeah. um, so I, I am at a point now where I, I, I struggle to talk about him because I feel like it almost feels personal. Like I just don't like the things that he does and yeah. I don't want that to seep into anything, but there's, there's some, like I talked to Sean Payton about it on my podcast early in the season. There was, I don't even remember what week it was, but it was very early and he threw what would have been a touchdown pass to Christian Watson. And it was like Christian Watson's first game, I think. And Christian Watson dropped it and a total like, 
blown play by the rookie wide receiver and the camera, Aaron Rodgers knows the camera's on him. It's always on him. And he turns around, he does the like, like yeah. so annoyed. His face is like, I'm so annoyed with you. And I was like, he's in his first game. Yeah. Like he knows he that more than anyone. Like be the guy who helps to make lift him them feel up. comfortable. Like make him feel like, um, uh, like not afraid to fail, you know, like give him permission. Like he's going to fail every once in a while. That's what everyone does when they're developing, like make him feel like it's okay. And the more that he feels that from you, he, he's not going to do that all the time. Like he's not, he's holding himself to that high standard. You don't need to embarrass Imagine if Kenny day. Pickett did that every time Deontay Johnson dropped the ball. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like who the fuck are you? Yeah. Um, yeah, but so, so Aaron for me is at a point where like, and then so darkness retreat. Okay. That's how we got going with this. When he went on McAfee and he said he went into the darkness thinking he was 90% sure he was going to retire, <laughs> but then like, so, so now that's the guy that's going to lead every, uh, uh, the jets to the super bowl. This guy that literally was ready to walk away from football and $60 million. Like, just like, I'm done, but yeah. now you have offended me. And so I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to what? To spite you? Like, I just, I don't, I don't get the whole thing. Yeah. And then he, and then he was like, something changed for the first time. And I felt offended by it. But, but then he went on to say that during the season, he already knew that he wasn't coming back because all of the vibes were telling him that they didn't want him there. So I was like, so what really changed in the darkness? Because you just said that you felt that during the season too. I feel like he's somebody who um, wants to win a PR battle and he wants people to think it's the Packers fault that he is leaving the Packers. Well, and I if think it's anything. He's... Yeah. If it's anything like uh, him, he'll get to the AFC championship game and lose. And maybe Kenny Pickett will beat him because it doesn't seem like he could get he, past the NFC championship. He seems game. like a guy that would stand in front of his car and not look back once when somebody is trying to potentially get in that parking spot. Just gotta, um just yes. gotta throw that out there. That that I think like, Andy would have his headlights on. His Tinder bio or his hinge bio, like that, that should be Wikipedia under his description. I'm I'm throwing that out there right now. I think that should be right there under his uh under his bio, Lindsay. I'm the guy that won't wave you off. You'll <laughs> wait for me because my time's more valuable. Than for sure. Yours. Give us a draft storyline. What do you think about the Panthers move? What what kind of uh have you been talking about on your show? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not as deep into the draft uh, yet as I intend to be. Um, so I'm not hundred percent sure. One of the things that I think is interesting is like to wait and see where Bijan Robinson goes. Like mm -hmm. the, the running back market is clearly not where running backs want it to be. And so I, I think he's an interesting test of that. Um, because he is one of the more exciting running backs that's come out for a few years. He's a guy that I think a team could, if they were still operating the way that teams operated about five years ago, that a team could maybe take him a little bit earlier than most of the teams would. So, But I also think that what we've seen in free agency is that the majority of teams are kind of caught up on value of running back and value over replacement and, um, and also like Zeke is the perfect example of in every possible way, checks all the boxes of what not to do with a running back. Don't draft him that high. So he comes into the league already one of the highest paid running backs in the league, just because of where um, the draft spots are slotted financially. And then certainly don't extend him like that and give him a big money contract, regardless of who it is, you know, like, uh, like the Austin Eckler thing right now. And I am a huge Austin Eckler fan. I think he's, just so insanely talented and I love him personally. I think he's a great guy, but the fact that he wants a trade, I'm like, if I was just from a business standpoint, if I was the chargers front office, I would message this differently to him, but I'd be like tough, like too bad. Like you're so valuable to us and we still need to bring in a different guy in the backfield to have a little bit more of like a true running game to balance that out. But if I have you for $7 million at your skill level, then too bad. So sad. I have you. And I might tag you next year too, because it doesn't make much sense to extend a running back at the price that I'm sure he's asking for. It just doesn't make any sense. And there's too many examples. I mean, David Johnson is somebody that I was like banging the table for back in the day. Like, oh my God, they have to pay him. Well, I hope they didn't listen to me because that was a bad, bad decision that the Cardinals did to extend him at the rate that they did. So anyway, this is a long way of saying that the, the running back, Bijan Robinson, 
particularly as somebody that I'm really interested to see how far he falls down the first round. Because even if he falls to the bottom of the first round, where you could argue that there's value there, if like a team that is good and maybe one piece away and they add that piece, then he mm-hmm. can get them over the top into the Super Bowl. You're still looking at a fifth year option. And that fifth year option could be way more valuable at a different position. If you could lock up a tackle, like a left tackle or something like that, and then you have that person on a fifth-year option without having to extend him, um, a position that you're going to ultimately have to pay a lot more money than the running back, then you could argue that it's not even smart to take him to the second round just for pure financial uh, business reasons, having nothing to do with talent. So that's one that I'm definitely looking out for. And then the tight ends. I think the fact that – there were so many teams down the stretch that had really strong tight end play and anybody who plays fantasy and I'm really big into fantasy. Anyone who plays fantasy knows that the tight end position was just a shit show last year. I hope that's okay to say um, that there was like a handful you already of dropped guys. an F bomb. We can do shit. Did show. I, did yeah. I? Yeah, but we like, we like it, it spices it up a little bit. I'm, it's the off season. Now you, now you have to like put it. Now you have to put an E movie. on the podcast and some people okay. might not, right. you know, it's like a PG 13 movie. You get two freebies. <laughs> we're good but tight but tight ends it's a great draft uh draft class for tight ends and so that's a position that you could potentially wait on until the second round like the lions who i've already talked about you know they trade away tj hawkinson who they were paying he he had a base salary of 900 some odd thousand dollars this past year it balloons to nine million this year so they got out ahead of that got out of that financially and then got a second in return do they use that second to go get one of these really good tight ends, you know, they could get somebody in for like peanuts on the dollar who can do exactly what TJ Hawkinson does. And so the, the tight ends uh, are a position that I am really interested in because the best teams in the NFL this year that made it to the end had really good tight end play that they could count on. There were a lot of teams that couldn't say that. No question. It's certainly deep from Dalton Kincaid to Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame, Darnell Washington, a beast out of Georgia. Interesting that you brought up Bijan. I tweeted the other day, I think he's going to be the best player when it's all said and done in this entire class. Tampa, yeah. L.A., could you imagine if he goes to the Philadelphia Eagles sleeper to watch out? Oh, holy hell. Holy, I know. That's do your they third. Need, do you they need over? him, though? I mean, no, okay. like, I like the Rashad Penny signing, and I know that he's not going to stay sure. healthy, and you put another person in your backfield, but, like, Rashad, his advanced metrics, when he's been on the field these last few years – He's really good. He just flies under the radar because he's not on the field all the time. Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of the best, you're one of the best in the business. An absolute Thanks, pleasure. Where can people hear you? Uh, I will be back. Run hiatus right now on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. They wanted to talk baseball for some reason at the start <laughs> of the season. So uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks there. Um, and uh, yeah, the NFL Roadshow is also on pause right now, but we'll um, get that back up and running soon. So both of those two places. Sweet. We can't wait. I can tell everybody where they can hear you right here on the Sick Podcast Steelers. Yeah. Crazy. Let's do it again sometime, Lindsay. Thank you so, so much. I'd love that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Peace. You got it. Yeah, great time, man. Jordan, chopping it up yeah, with Lindsay. Great guys. Always exciting. Yeah, 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 good stuff. And thank you guys for watching another episode of the Sick Podcast, Steelers Crazy. We'll be back. More draft prospects. You know, we're about a month out right now. Jordan's flexing. He's going to try out at Pitt's Pro Day coming up here, see if he can be a special teamer moving forward. Uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Subscribe to YouTube. Check us out. Follow us on Twitter at Sick Pod Steelers. Until next time, that's Jordan. I'm Mike. Peace. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.